In this problem, we're going to look at a box being lifted with a rope. And we're going to try and calculate the tension in the rope if we're given the acceleration. Or if we're given the tension in the rope, we'll calculate the acceleration of the box. And so in these lifting and lowering problems, there's two forces that you need to look at. You have the upward force of the rope, and you have the downward force of gravity. And you need to make sure that you include both forces in the problem. So the first thing to do is to calculate the force of gravity acting on this box. The force of gravity is the mass of the object times 9.8, which for this box it has a weight of 196 newtons. Again, this is the mass of the object times the gravitational field strength of 9.8 meters per second squared. And then pulling up on this box, we have the rope. So we have the tension in the rope, or the force that the rope exerts on the box. And so you can label that as T for the tension in the rope, or you can label it as the force of the rope. And in these problems, if the force of the rope is bigger than the force of gravity, the box is going to be accelerating upwards. And if the force of the rope is less than the force of gravity, the box is going to be accelerating downwards. And so that's going to be something for us to keep in mind as we look at these parts to the problem. In all of these parts to the problem, I'm going to let up be the positive direction. So that means all of my vectors, forces, and accelerations that are up, I make positive, And all of my vectors, the forces and accelerations that are downward, I'm going to make negative. So in part A, the box has an upward acceleration of 4 meters per second squared. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add up all of the individual forces. I know that the net force acting on an object, that means all of the forces added together. So the net force that's acting on this box is the upward force of the rope plus the force of gravity. But since it's down, and I said that down was the negative y direction, this force of gravity is negative 196 newtons. We also have Newton's second law that relates the acceleration to the net force. Newton's second law says that the net force acting on an object equals its mass times its acceleration. Again, this tells us how much net force is needed to give a certain size mass a specific acceleration. And so for this 20 kilogram box, the net force needed to make it accelerate at 4 meters per second squared is 20 kilograms times 4 meters per second squared. Again, that acceleration is upwards, so I'm going to say that's a positive acceleration. So I need to have a net force of 80 newtons. There's a net force of 80 newtons upwards on this box to make it accelerate up at 4 meters per second squared. And so now I can put those two pieces together. I know that the net force is the force of the rope minus 196 newtons, but I know that together those must equal 80 newtons. That's what Newton's second law told us. So this tells us that our upward force of the rope is 276 newtons. Again, we said that if something is accelerating upwards, then the upward force of the rope should be bigger than the downward force of gravity, and 276 is bigger than 196, and so that matches what we would expect. Now, the box is going to have a downward acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. So I'm still going to make up my positive direction. So the net force acting on this box is the individual forces, the force of the rope, plus the downward force of gravity. And then we have Newton's second law 
that the net force acting on the box needs to be the mass of the box times the acceleration. But here, since my acceleration is downward, I need to make it negative. My acceleration is negative 2 meters per second squared. So my net force is going to be negative 40 newtons. I have a net downward force of 40 newtons. And so putting those pieces together, the force of the rope minus 196 newtons equals negative 40 newtons. Or the force of the rope equals 156 newtons. The tension in the rope is 156 newtons. And again, if we have 156 newtons acting upwards and 150, uh, 196 newtons acting downwards, then that will cause the box to accelerate downwards. If the upward force is smaller than the force of gravity, then the box will accelerate downwards. In the final part, we're told that the tension in the rope was 150 newtons. And again, it's the same box, which has a force of gravity of 196 newtons. And so the first thing that this said was state which direction it's accelerating. And so since the upward force of 150 newtons is smaller than the downward force of gravity, this box will accelerate downwards. Again, the upward force is smaller than the downward force, so the net force is downward, which means that it will accelerate downward. It always accelerates in the direction of the net force. So we use the same method that we were using before. We add the individual forces together. So the net force is positive 150 newtons for the upward force of 150 plus negative 196 newtons. So I know that the net force is negative 46 newtons. And again, Newton's second law relates the net force and the acceleration. So it's 20 kilograms times the acceleration. So putting those two things together, negative 46 newtons equals 20 kilograms times the acceleration. And I get an acceleration of negative 2.3 meters per second squared. And this negative sign means that it was accelerating downward, which is what we said should be. 150 newtons upwards, 196 newtons downwards, that would give a downward acceleration. So with all of these lifting and lowering problems, you always need to make sure that you're including all of the forces, the upward force of the rope and the downward force of gravity. A common mistake is just to include the force of gravity or just to include the tension in the rope. It's much more common to just include the tension in the rope, but that's not correct. You need to include both of those forces that are acting. You set up an equation, you add all those individual forces together, because that's what the net force means, and then you use Newton's second law to relate the net force to the acceleration, and you solve for either the force that you're looking for, or you solve for the acceleration of the object.